Hey everybody, I'm Sandra Nelson, founder of Aquatacy. I'm at the moment down in downtown San Francisco, right down here by the piers, because I'm waiting to give a ride home to some friends of ours who are just getting back from a cruise from Hawaii. There's our cruise ship right there. Now they don't have any fish or other pets that they had to worry about while they were gone, but I'm gonna guess because you're watching this video, you do have fish. But do you have a plan in place for their care if you're gonna be gone for a while? You know, for most fish, it's not that difficult to take care of them while you're away. But there are good ways of doing it, and there are not so good ways of doing it. And that's our topic for this video. And that's why I'm calling this Travel Advisory. Whether you're planning a vacation or get called out of town on business or regarding a personal matter, you need to have a strategy in place for the care and feeding of your fish while you're gone. Fortunately for you, and even more fortunately for your fish, this isn't difficult at all, as long as you use some common sense and plan things in advance. How you deal with the care of your fish during your absence will depend upon how long you're going to be away, but here are some general tips that apply no matter how long you'll be gone. It's always a good idea to run your lights on a timer, even more so when you're on a trip. You wouldn't want whoever you asked to take care of your fish to accidentally leave the lights on all the time or forget to turn them on in the first place. Good digital timers are easy to come by and are relatively inexpensive. And although they sell timers at many chain pet stores, they're really no different than the general purpose timers sold at Target, Walmart, Home Depot, or any hardware or home improvement store. Shop around and find the best price. And if you're running CO2 on a planted tank, you can use timers to control that as well. Consider getting a second heater for your aquarium. Even top-rated brands can occasionally fail. By having two heaters on your tank while you're away from home, if one mysteriously conks out, the other will keep going. And don't worry, having two heaters won't overheat the water. That's why aquarium heaters have built-in thermostats. Before going on any trip, it's wise to clean and inspect your filter to make sure it's running properly and efficiently. Clear out any tubes or hoses, and perhaps change or rinse out the filter media before leaving town. And remember, if you're going to rinse sponges and other filter media, do it in old tank water while you're doing a water change, instead of rinsing in tap water. Tap water could kill the beneficial nitrifying bacteria colony you worked so hard to establish when you first cycled your tank. It should go without saying that just prior to your departure, you should do a partial water change on your tank. Nothing major. Doing a 25 to 30% water change or whatever your regular routine's amount is will be sufficient in most cases. Go ahead and give your fish a good feeding before you leave. Don't overfeed them though. Instead of one big feeding, give your fish several average sized feedings the day before you leave or the actual day you depart. That covers the basics. Now let's look at what specifically to do or not to do in the short term and in the long term. What special things should you do for your fish if you're going to be gone for only a few days? Well, nothing. Seriously. Certainly different fish species have different needs, but generally speaking, if you're only going to be gone for less than a week, you may not need to do much of anything at all. You've already taken precautions regarding lighting, heating, and filtration, You've done a water change, and you've fed them well. That's really all you have to do. Well, who's going to feed them while I'm gone? <laughs> no one. You already did. Contrary to popular belief, most fish don't need to eat every day. In fact, most cold-blooded creatures in general do not need to eat each day. Cold-blooded creatures get the heat they need to survive from the warm environment around them. Warm-blooded creatures need to generate their own body heat. Therefore, warm-blooded creatures such as dogs, cats, birds, and rodents need to consume food every day to fuel their internal engine, as it were, that drives their body temperature. Cold-blooded critters such as reptiles and fish don't need to have that extra fuel to keep themselves warm, so they can eat less food each day or go longer without food and still be perfectly healthy. This means eating every day is a requirement for warm-blooded animals, but not for cold-blooded organisms like fish. There are, of course, exceptions to this. 
If you have a tank full of fry that you're trying to raise, they may need to be fed daily. And some non-fish aquatic creatures like African dwarf frogs shouldn't go very many days between feedings. For nearly all other aquarium inhabitants, at least on the freshwater side of this hobby, don't worry about feedings. Everybody should be fine for up to a week while you're gone. Just remember to feed them as soon as you get back home. Okay, now what if you're going to be gone for up to two weeks? Or a month? If that's the case, then you definitely need to find a way to feed your fish during your absence. Going longer than a week without food could be detrimental to the health of your fish. You don't want them to starve, and conversely, you don't want them to start picking each other off until you're down to one. So before your fish go all Lord of the Flies on you, let's look at the options you have for feeding them while you're away. For tanks that are 10 gallons and up, an automated feeder is a nice solution. This is basically a rotary dispenser with a built-in timer that delivers a predetermined amount of food at regularly timed intervals. They hang on a tank, like a hang-on-back filter, and drop food into the water at programmed times. Most automatic feeders available to the hobby are pretty reliable. They work great for dried foods, but are not suited for live or frozen foods. Having a friend or family member come over to your home might seem like the best method to feed your fish while you're away, but it may not be. People forget. People make mistakes. People change their minds. In other words, people are not always reliable. If you're going to have someone feed your fish for you, try to find a fellow fish enthusiast who knows what they're doing. You don't want to have to explain things over and over or leave lengthy instructions to follow. But if the only person available to help is not a fish person, then the best thing to do is to write good, concise notes and measure out the food for each feeding day. Those pill and vitamin organizers you find at the pharmacy work great for portioning fish food for your designated aquatic caregiver. By measuring out the meals ahead of time, your fish sitter will be less tempted to overfeed your fish because, oh gosh, they still looked so hungry. You may have seen aquarium feeding blocks or slow release feeders in pet stores. The old school versions, which are still sold today, are basically plaster blocks that have fish food mixed into them. They look like salt licks for fish. These feeding blocks purport to slowly release nutrients into the water to sustain your fish for several days or weeks. Do I recommend them? In a word, no. No, 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 no. The plaster feeding blocks provide poor sustenance for your fish and can cloud your water. In my humble opinion, you should stay away from these things. A more modern style of the slow release feeder does away with the plaster as the binding agent. While definitely better than the plaster blocks, they can still be problematic. They may release too many nutrients into the water, causing algae blooms or seriously altering the water chemistry in your tank. Personally, I'd pass on them. If you have fish that require a certain amount of vegetable matter in their diet, you can add some tender, tasty live plants to your aquarium for those fish to nibble on. If you have autos or bristlenose plecos, you can even leave some big chunks of zucchini in the tank for them to munch on over time. Something like zucchini, if not fully eaten, is far less likely to foul the water than a slow-release feeder. Whether or not you plan to have someone come over to feed your fish, if your travel plans call for you to be away for longer than a week, it may still be wise to have someone drop by once or twice to make sure any aquariums in your home are not leaking. He or she may not be equipped with the know-how to help your fish survive, but they can mop up the mess before your home sustains any water damage. If you keep all this in mind and take these few wise precautions, there's no reason for you to fret over your fish during your excursion. They'll be just fine, honestly. So relax. Put your mind at ease and go on your trip. Don't worry about your fish, and they won't worry about you. Okay, I just got a text from them. They're ready for me to bring the car around and pick them up, so I'm gonna go do that now. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll leave some comments down below. Let me know some of your tips and tricks about taking care of your fish while you're away. And until next time, blessings to you. Actually, my car is parked over that way. So. so, how was Hawaii? Hawaii? Yes. What? That's where I went. That's where you went. I was wondering where those chickens were. <laughs> Did you see any fish in Hawaii? No, I, I kind of got distracted by the chickens.
Okay. See, it was, uh, Mount, uh, Kauai is called Rooster Island for a reason. There's a lot of wild chicken there. It was right in front of Walmart. Uh, mm. This is yelling at me. Get in the car. <laughs> Get in the car. All right.